Hi there everybody, it's Sally here. Welcome back to Tuesday Teaching Tips. And as you can see, I'm on the floor. I'm really hoping that you can all see me and all hear me. But I needed to be on the floor, so I've spent a good 15 minutes working out how I'm going to do this. The joys of the internet. So today I'm just going to briefly look at some common confusions that happen with children in particular about reading notation. And these are confusions that we just take for granted these days uh, but um, because of our expertness but children can often get it completely wrong. Um, so by the end of this video hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how children see notation sometimes. So the, the things we're going to look at are the confusions first of all that the children have about the direction of the stem. Don't you find that children sometimes don't quite know, they think when they see a note moving from there, well, let's say from there, like that, um, and then suddenly it turns around like that. And if you've got two of them, let's put one here and one there, there we go, if we have that and that, then to children, that looks different. Yeah, we know it's the same, but to children it looks different. And it's a bit like, um, you know, when you think about it, when they're at school, they learn to read D's and they learn to read B's as being different letters. And yet, in many respects, they have the same elements in that they have a blob and they have a stem and that has a blob and it has a stem. And to be honest, you can kind of see that these are the same, just that we turn them around and where they go makes a difference to the name of the note, but it doesn't actually change what they're doing. So that's one confusion. And another confusion is that they don't really realise that they have to read the blob rather than the stem. I don't know about you, but I've certainly come across uh, pupils myself who you just can't decipher. You know, they, they might look at that note, for example, and they suddenly tell you it's an E and you think, oh, it's very close because it would be an E here. But then you eventually work out, after painstaking detective work, that actually they're reading this note. They're reading the top of the stem because they haven't realised that they're reading the blob. And I know somebody else mentioned this to me the other day as well. So I do know it's a, quite a common problem. So in this video, um, I'm going to be just giving you a couple of ideas for how you can help to unconfuse, unravel those. And I think one thing is what I've got here, a physical representation of the stave away from the piano. Um, and here we have something tangible. And what I'm using here is something called a manumat. And this has been developed by somebody called Peter Simpson. And he has got a website and you can go on and buy them. And what I love about this is that I came back, I went to America back in 2001, I think, to the World Piano Pedagogy Forum. And I found this fantastic floor stave there, but it was a cloth one and it was just a single stave. Anyhow, and it had all these notes and things. And um, I used it time and time again to talk about the importance of moving away from the piano. Peter saw me do this once and then developed this idea on the back of that. So these are now freely available um, within the UK and he also ships abroad. Anyhow, enough of that. So what I particularly love is the fact that you can get the children to manipulate and you can show that you've got one note and you can say, well, it could look like that. But look, if I just rotate it round, it's exactly the same. Nothing's changed. It's just that it's been rotated and the stem is now going down. And not only can I do that, but I can get on the floor with my pupils and they can do that. And that physicality is so important, so important for their understanding. If it's on the music and the music is on the piano, it's all a bit abstract, but here we can get really, really physical about it. So that would be the first thing that I would say. And I think the same, um, the same kind of lesson also applies for this idea of where is, the, uh, where is the note name? The note name lives with the blob rather than up there. And you might get a little counter, I haven't got them here at the moment, um, you might get a little counter, I have got over here though, and just pop the, the, the letter name of the note on there. there. You see that all these come with it, there we go. So we've got an F, there we are, to really establish that that space there is the thing that gives it its name, which happens to be an F. Um, okay, 
So I think that's one thing to get the physicality going. And, you know, middle C as well. Middle C is obviously in the middle. And again, to get them to see that middle C, whichever way it goes, is exactly the same note. So that's one thing, the physicality. And I think the second thing then is to get the children writing music. Start by copying. So you might write out a passage. You might write it here first, you know, even if it's just two notes like that. You might, or even let's go for three notes. Let's be really adventurous here. There we go, three notes, C, D and E. And um, you could write it on the full stay, go to the piano, get a piece of manuscript or stay on the floor. You write out those three notes and the child watches you and then they copy. And then you could send them home and a bit of homework would be to write out the bar of one of the pieces they're learning. Because again, writing is a really good way of, uh, of, of, of fixing the skill, of helping them to understand that. OK, so a couple of um, suggestions there for how you can help your, your pupils be less confused about notation. Remember, it's something we take for granted because we've learnt to do that. We understand this for a lot of children, not all of them, but for some of them, certainly they don't have that clarity. So this by getting a floor stay, getting onto the floor, messing around with it and also getting the children to write on the stave, um, physically write can really help them to clarify what the blobs, the stems, etc. mean. Right, that's the end of my Tuesday teaching tip for today. I hope that's been really helpful. Happy teaching and have a good day wherever you are in the world. Bye for now.